This week on New Zealand on a Plate, we're in Queenstown. Though we also venture further afield, where our chef, Corey Hume, tracks down amazing ingredients for delectable dining. He'll go to the high country, where some of New Zealand's finest Angus Pure Special Reserve beef is grown, and then prepare an entree that's a work of art. Later, he'll use more Angus Pure beef for the main course, and then pop down the road to Oamaru to pick up some exquisite cheese for dessert. Beautiful. <laughs> Good day at the office. <laughs> Corey Hume is one of New Zealand's top chefs and often represents the country in international culinary competitions. He's in charge of the kitchen at the exclusive Blanket Bay Lodge near Queenstown. I love being in the kitchen with mum and grandma and nana. I had a real attraction to food. Uh, and later in life, I just I really couldn't resist. I couldn't get my hands off it in a sense. And later in high school and, and going into Polytech, it, it became a medium for creativity and, and the artistic side of it. I'm really passionate about ingredients and, and the quality and where they're sourced. And uh, I want to know the product I'm sourcing are from people who are just as passionate. Then I can be ensured that they've taken good care of the product and I really am getting the best, not just at face value, but I've seen it for myself. Come on, Sam. At Braemar Station, on the shore of Lake Pukaki, some of New Zealand's tenderest and juiciest Angus Pure beef is grown. Only meat from the best grass-fed Angus cattle is good enough to be branded Angus Pure Special Reserve. Come on, Sam. Throw on, Sam. Braemar is owned by Hamish McKenzie's family. Bad weather in the mountains kept Corey away from Braemar yesterday, but today, he's able to arrive in style. Hi, how you doing? G'day, Corey. Good to meet you. Likewise. Thanks for having me here at Braemar Station. Beautiful no property you have here. Yeah. Stunning yeah, no, location. We're, we're lucky to be here, really. So uh, we have some beautiful Angus over here. And, and tell me a little bit about the station. Uh, the station's 4,100 hectares. We run about 11,000 stock units, made up of uh, Angus pure cattle. Um, sheep and deer. There's about 320 cows go to the bull. Um, I have about four, just over 400 Angus pure cattle on the property. Mm. They're grass fed and it's all grass. They do well in this country. It's um, in the summer, spring, summer, we have a, an abundance of green grass and they, they do really well on that. They've got the ability to travel and find themselves a feed. Um, we've got Big areas, fresh water, plenty of room for them to move, and they um, they just seem to do really well in this environment. Just across Lake Pukaki, there's another high country property, Glen Tanner Station, and as Corey arrives, the weather finally clears, revealing New Zealand's highest mountain. Behind us, we're at the base of Mount Cook, and what a here, day. it's beautiful, isn't it? And here with my friend Tom. So, Tom, welcome. Thank you, Corey. Here we've got some beautiful Angus Pure Special Reserve ribeye. This is a stunning product. You can see that marbling in here and, and throughout the meat and the colour. And look at, yeah, look at the texture in here. That's right, and that's what's special about this product is that it's grass-fed as yes. well. It's sustainable, and the marbling is really even throughout here. Beautiful texture. So for this afternoon, we're going to do a little carpaccio of beef here. We've got this wonderful Angus Pure Special Reserve tenderloin here. Now, this doesn't have the same sort of fat cap, of course, like a ribeye does, yes. as we saw before, but you can see the marbling very clearly in here as well. So, Corey, what's the difference between Angus Pure Special Reserve and normal Angus Pure that we've heard about? Well, the Angus Pure Special Reserve, this is predominantly based for the export market. It's available uh, in certain select stores throughout New Zealand, right? but this is the, the highest end of the level of the product. Yes. So we're going to quite heavily season this. And you'll notice I'm not using any pepper. Yes. Because I consider pepper a spice. Okay. And so salt is going to bring up the natural flavour of this beef here. Right. 
And with all the other little condiments we've got, we don't really want to overpower that flavour. We want to do everything to bring out what's here and complement it. That's a good tip because I would have been reaching for the pepper. Exactly. We're conditioned to do that more so than anything yeah. else. We've got some beautiful extra virgin avocado oil here. So you can see it's starting to smoke just slightly there. Okay, I'm going to pop that in the pan. Oh, listen to that. So you hear that sizzle? Yeah. So yeah, you really want that reaction to be quite quick. Cooking time, what are we? Cooking time, we're really, for this particular preparation, we're just going to sear the outside. Yes. And we just want a really nice sear on there. A little bit of that fat will render down very slowly from it. We're going to keep moving it around a little bit because actually the heat, the transfer and caramelization will happen faster than traditionally uh, as we're conditioned to leave it. And you can see in the color how it's here around the outside, but it's still relatively raw in the center there. And really, that's a, probably about as much as we want to cook it for this. Right. Which is great. Just let it relax a little bit. So we're going to put it in something that we can roll really tight like this. And then we're going to tightly roll it. And then it's almost like a Christmas cracker. Absolutely. So we can see that helps keeps its shape when it cools down a little bit. So give it a wee twist there. Another twist the opposite way. And I've got a little freezer down here, so I'm just going to bring it down to chill it really, really cold. Okay. Like that. So we'll pull this out of the freezer now. So it hasn't quite frozen, but I've just chilled it down enough just to hold that fibral structure of the seared tenderloin in there. This is the reason why we do this is important, so we can slice it nice and thin. And just slice down. So you're cutting it very fine, aren't you? Yeah. Just into little, some nice bite-sized pieces. And you can see, as I'm cutting through it there, you can see that marbling continuing through there. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? So again, more salt on this. Corey, a risk that you over salt? Uh, is, is always a risk, you know. With, with experience we learn exactly how much salt something needs. So I've got some little um, pickled mustard seeds. I'll literally just put a little bit on each piece. The next thing we have here is a little bit of minced caper. Minced caper? Yeah, and these are little baby salted capers. It can be quite strong. Just put a little bit with that. Each bite, it's almost like a little mini meal in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit of finely diced cornish on. People will otherwise know it as little baby gherkins. Right. Now we've got a little bit of this rosemary dressing here. So I've used the avocado oil in this. This is really cool. This is one of my favorite condiments uh, that we make, I like using. Then I've got another interesting little condiment here. This is what I call a, a little parmesan pudding. Now I've got just for a little bit of textural crunch on there. Just some nice little croutons which I've sauteed in the avocado oil. So I'm just gonna put one little piece on each one. So now I've got these little beautiful rosemary flowers. So we've got the rosemary in the dressing. So I like to garnish things with a dish that already is part of the dish itself. Here's a little micro radish. So I just provide a nice wee contrast there. Look at that presentation, 10 out of 10, Corey. There we are, nice casual little dish to share. Corey, I've actually got some friends of mine here. Do you mind if I um, give them a yell? Bring them over. Brilliant. Great. Hello, Katie. Hello. Hello, Bex. Hi. Hi, this is ladies, how you doing? Corey, the chef from Blanket Bay, Hi, Bex and welcome. Katie. Hi, Thank Bex you. and Katie. I'd love for you to try and give me some feedback and see what you think. Oh, oh thank you, Tom. Treat. So the tenderloin's a really nice cut to do this with because it is so tender. Beautiful. Beautiful view, beautiful scenery, beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>going direct to the source rather than just through the sort of the, the middle people and distributors. And it's finding the best product that I can possibly get into the lodge. We have a huge responsibility to showcase cuisine, New Zealand cuisine and New Zealand product at this level uh, to our international visitors.
Nestled in the Southern Alps, the lodge overlooks Lake Wakatipu. In a setting like this, Corey's guests don't mind waiting while he creates something special for dinner. Hi there, so we're at the Blanca Bay kitchen and I'm working with the uh, beef main course tonight. We've got some Angus Pure Special Reserve wonderful beef tenderloin. We've sous vide this at 52 degrees Celsius with the white stone smoked butter in this little vacuum pack for about an hour and a half. And it allows us to impregnate the item that's in the bag with additional flavour. So I've got the braised beef cheek and also a little oxtail raviolo. So this is what we call sort of nose to tail cooking. So what we've done, we've cooked each of these items separately for about 24 hours over a low heat in an oven. Beautiful amounts of stock, red wine from quartz reef and the like, beautiful aromatic herbs and vegetables. And I've got a really nice, beautiful, intense jus we've made from these beef cheeks, which we're gonna rehydrate and poach these in uh, to serve with the main. I'm using a generous amount of salt on here. So I season it really well. A little bit of avocado oil. Not too much, because we don't really want to heavily smoke inside that pan there. Just put it in there, a gentle smoking on there, controlling the heat underneath to make sure that it's not too hot, that it's really gonna burn it. Every piece of meat is slightly different, so not every piece of meat is gonna react the same way. So I just like to check a little bit, just to see how that charring is going. And that's looking really nice there. All I want is just some nice defined lines on there without it overcooking more. Remember, we've already cooked it in the water bath. And then just on the top and the bottom of the fillet there, just to sear it in there. So this part, really a couple of seconds on each end is, is more than enough there. So here we have the raviolo. Three minutes in a nice big pot, boiling salted water, really important. Don't be afraid to put salt in the water there and actually put quite a bit. It needs to season the pasta. Just gently, I'm not going to drop it from a height, I'm just going to drop it in very carefully like so. And this little diced beef cheek here, I'm going to warm this through in the jus. So ravioli has been in the pot for about three minutes now. It's got a little bit of oil in a wee bowl. It's going to drop that gently inside. This is just going to help stop it drying out. So just rub a bit of oil on top of that. A little bit of salt, just to finish it. So now we're going to cook these vegetables pretty much all at the same time. So this little potato fondant, like so, I'll just put it down into the pan. Listen for that sizzle there. And we're just going to let it sit for about a good 30 seconds before we transfer it to the oven. Still cooking on that one side. And then halfway through, I'm going to flip it over on the other side and then bring it out. So I've got this fondant out of the oven now. It's been about two and a half, three minutes inside there. You can see a nice deeply developed crust, nice and golden. I'll just take this off and drain it in a little bit of absorbent paper. So the baby leek, I'm just going to put this in the pot to blanch. About maximum one minute, not even that. 45 seconds even is probably enough. These little baby turnips, we're going to blanch in a separate pot of boiling salted water. And also the kale. 30 seconds, 45 seconds for this is on a rapidly boiling heat. It's going to be enough to cook it through. So I've got the white stone smoked butter here. Nice pre-warmed pan just like so. Got a lovely, wonderful, smoky aroma coming off that already. These vegetables now have been cooking, so we're gonna transfer them gently into the pan. I'm just gonna warm that through, essentially let that smoke butter coat all the vegetables. We've got a little beetroot here as well. We're just gonna pop that through on the other side of the pan, because we don't want any color to come off that beetroot. So I'm just gonna keep these garnishes warm now. So that way, everything's nice and warm, ready for the plate up. And the last thing I'm gonna do is start to slice the beef. And a little bit of extra salt on the cut surface. Okay, so the braised beef cheek here in its own jus goes in this beautiful red copper pot. So we've got a little puree here. It's a little uh, sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke as it's commonly known as as well up like this. So now we're gonna garnish with these crispy Jerusalem artichoke chips, seasoned with truffle salt. Bon appetit, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much.
Oh, good food, good wine, good company. Beautiful. <laughs> good day at the office. Yeah. <laughs> Corey's next stop is Oamaru, on the east coast of the South Island. The town is famous for its Victorian architecture and for the local building material, Oamaru stone, a white limestone that is hewn from the hills just outside the town. Another thing Omaru is becoming known for is fine cheese, appropriately known as white stone. Founded in 1987 by local farmer Bob Berry, white stone cheese is today managed by his son Simon. Hi Corey, how are you Hi, going? Hi Simon, good thanks. Thanks for having me here. Uh, yeah, welcome to White Stone Cheese. Cheers. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to you showing me around the factory and all your different cheeses that you make. And I know you've got some special projects on the go here. Yeah, we do a few different cheeses. So yeah, we'll, we'll start with our Linda's, eh? Nice one, that sounds good. All right, mate, down this way. Cheers. So this is what we call labelling of the curd for our Linda's past cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris is taking the, the uh, I guess you'd say, coagulated uh, milk and adding it straight by ladle into the hoops. So these mm. hoops form the size of the of the cheese and the shape. Right. Um, and the ladling retains all the moisture. You can see all that moisture yeah. being, being kept in there. We're not draining any of that whey off. Yep. So what we're seeing here is curds and whey. Yep. And the whey then comes out the side here, which right. yep. that's the draining happening. Yeah. So it's just what called a gravity press. You can see that slowly sinking yeah. together. Yep. And then that's what uh, we call it knitting. Those curds will knit together to make ah, that lovely right. smooth texture. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our humming room. Wow, uh, you amazing. Can, yeah, you can see here, these are our little baby cams. So they've got the white mould growing on there. Wow. The whole rack is turned uh, every second day, mm -hmm. so the rack marks go away. Yep. And you can see that fuzziness on there, that's that's the white mould actually growing. Yeah. And then after about 10 days, we pack those off. And that's what compresses the mould and gives it that yep. nice texture around the outside that we see when we open that package up. Yep. And right. that, that mould's growing, you can smell it in the room. Yeah. And um, like traditionally from France, that's the a natural protection barrier. Yep. We use a camembert mould. Yep. And technically it's a penicillin and candium. Mm -hmm. and that comes from France. Right, great. So this is the blue room. Great. Yeah, you can see uh, we mature a significant quantity of blue cheese in here. Most yeah. of the winds are blue. Yep. Um, this is these rounds you can see here. They get pierced by a, what we call a piercer. Yep. That feeds oxygen into the curd to uh, make the blue mould grow. We went to what's called like a sort of standard Rockford culture. Mm. We then replicated that on a series of different uh, variants. Yep. And we chose the one that suited us best with that sweet finish. Great. So that's our own unique uh, variant of, of blue culture. Excellent. So yeah, it's unique to us, which is great. Yeah. Well, we're really looking forward to serving this and uh, have everyone have a try. Yeah. It's going to cool. be good. So tonight we've got a wonderful cheese to work with, the White Stone Windsor Blue. This cheese we find really holds its own amongst the bigger blues around the world. So the first of all, we're going to start with a couple of garnishes. So we're not going to really do anything to the cheese itself, we're going to just complement it with a series of garnishes. The piece of cheese here we've got is roughly about 40 grams or so, which is probably a nice sized portion for this. It's been brought up to room temperature, so it's not cold out of the fridge. It needs to breathe like a good red wine. Open up the pores of the cheese. So we have some beautiful pear. So a nice sharp knife, straight through the center. Now we don't want this core running through the middle. So I'm just gonna square this off a little bit on the one side, concentrating on slicing really thin. It's quite important, this part. Nice thin slices. And of particular note, we can see the color now. That's a little bit opaque, a little bit milky. This is gonna change very shortly. This is quite an exciting wee process. So we've got a little vacuum pack here the pears in just like so and we don't want them overlapping at all so the lemon juice just straight into the bag just a little drop of the oil not much this is more for flavor than anything else Oop. and that's plenty it's gonna take all the oxygen out of the bag the cells of the pear will suddenly explode and then condense and crush down and as the cells crush all that oil and lemon juice will rub through the pear there we go and we can see already how that color has changed through here, pretty rapidly actually. 
we can see now how translucent it is. And when I'm holding it in my hands, even this far away, the aroma of the pear I get is really beautiful and strong. So this honey here, I'm gonna caramelize this in a pan, pre-warmed pan. I've maybe got about a tablespoon in there at the most. So as we can see the bubbles here, now I'll just put the nuts in, just give them a wee shake in the pan there. At this point, I just turn the heat down a little bit and just rotate them in the pan. Now already we can see that colour change in here is going to a nice sort of amber colour. This is exactly what we want. So when it happens like this, we're just going to turn the heat off because there's enough residual heat in the pan. And I'm just going to work a little bit quicker. We don't want it too dark. And we don't want too much honey there. So I'm going to transfer these to a non-stick sheet. And they'll naturally cool and the honey will harden. We bake some gingerbread loaf. We'll dry these slices further overnight in a dehydrator. And so you can almost hear that crunch. And they just snap. So here we have a little quarter of poached pear I poached earlier. A little bit of quartz leaf pinot gris. A little bit of aromatics. Just poached until it's tender. Slice it. It's a little bit thicker. It's got a little bit of textural contrast in the pear. And then a little last little garnish is our honeycomb. So just pick up the cheese gently, like so. And we've got some house-made quince paste we made as well. We've got some recent delivery of quinces. This little honeycomb at the top of the line there, I'm going to take our poached pear. I'm going to lay this in between the pieces of quince. And then, just to finish, a little microgreens. So to match with your cheese this afternoon, we've got the quartz reef bin of It's a 2014 vintage. Bon appetit and please enjoy. Cheers. 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 Stunning. Oh, that is delicious. Everything's incredible. Mm. <laughs> mm. Wonderful central cargo coke honey combined yeah. so well with the cream and blue. You've got that spice as well from the mm. fruit. The ginger and the ginger. Mm. Mm. Mm.